Hey everybody, I thought I would send out an email to you guys as kind of an introduction to what we're attempting to do with distance learning. Um, the other day I got together with Anna White, who is an absolutely amazing human being, and we talked about the different things that are going to go into what it's going to look like as a team as we move forward with this distance learning thing. So we took some notes, we came up with a document, and I have started making some videos to hopefully help through this unbelievably immense task of taking what teachers do every day at the school and turning it into a distance learning environment for the kids and for the parents. And um, uh, it is it is absolutely um, a brave new world. And so hopefully um, taking it piece by piece, maybe uh, it'll be a little bit easier, but you'll be seeing some videos from me um, over the coming days. I think um, Mr. Kennedy and uh, maybe Claire, you might be seeing our faces um, through Zoom, through um, crazy meetings or whatnot. Um, but this document that I have here on um, my Google Docs um, is something that we came up with that I'm just going to go over with very briefly, as briefly as I can, um, and see if it helps with any questions that you may have as you prepare for this um, distance learning. So we, you know, came up with an overview of basically what we're trying to do is um, use Google Classroom and PantherNet to get our materials online for kids. Um, that way they have access to the things that we were going to be doing in the classroom. And obviously it's going to look a lot different, um, but we are going to use those two mediums to communicate with them. Um, and then we will, as we do with everything in our curriculum, supplement with things um, on the side to kind of add to that. Um, so like I said, Google Classroom, it's a good option for fourth grade and up because they have an advent email. A lot of the classes are already using that. And I believe that Chris Copeland is going to be kind of the point person for that. If you have questions on how to set it up, um, the things that you can do with it, you're welcome to ask him. I also use it for the fourth grade as well. So if you have any questions for me, you're welcome to ask me. Um, but there's really amazing resources on the Google education site that walks you through the most, you know, beginning stages of, of doing this um, to some really complicated and fun and amazing things that you can do. Um, but for the lower school, PantherNet is probably going to be uh, a better option. It's what the parents are used to. Um, it is, as it says here, more than just doing assignments, um, more than just inputting grades. You can post your videos. You can um, put links and Im embed things if you want. Um, it's a little bit more than how we've been using it. And there's a really great thing called topics that I'm uh that I think is really handy for doing things and hopefully it will be useful for you. And I've got a video all about that. Um, so, you know, obviously I've got, before we begin, um, we need to make sure that the students have the workbooks in their textbooks. Um, because I, I know the last couple of days we started sending them home. Um, and then some of you sent packets of work home as well to get them started. That's great and fantastic. You can obviously uh, take those documents and turn them into scannable documents. On this do on this particular document, there's a scanner app here called iScanner, and um, Anna told me about it. And it turns whatever you take a picture of into a PDF. It's magical, and you can just email it to yourself and upload it, and it's great. Um, that's a there's a I think Evernote does it as well. There's a couple different programs out there that you can do that. Um, rather than just taking a picture, it'll turn it into a document, um, which is a lot of times um, way easier to deal with when you're uploading. Um, so there's that. And if you have questions about how that works, please let me know and I will help. Um, and then, you know, reach out to the parents. They're probably not, I mean, I'm sure you've all talked to them at least once already, um, let them know that you'll be in communication with them, but also remind them that you're a human being and that you'll be in communication with them for the duration of the school day, not at eight o'clock at night and not at five o'clock in the morning, because, you know, sometimes they do that. Um, 
and plan depending on the age level and the grade level of the student one to two hours of work for them a day. You know, we do have to take into consideration that there's going to be multiple kids at home sometimes. Sometimes there's only one device or only one laptop and mom or dad may be using it for their work during the day. So, um, you know, doing anything more than one to two hours of work a day, it's just probably going to be too much because, you know, we have to take into consideration that they're not used to doing their classwork on a device and it's going to be different. Um, and just like we were talking about that, you know, adjust your expectations of the student work at this time. You know, we want a certain amount of accountability for what they're doing, but we also want to understand the, the things that I just mentioned. Um, you know, this is a really weird thing that we're going through right now. Um, it can be panic inducing. It can be, you know, it, there's a lot of anxiety. Um, and also they may not be used to doing classes like this, or it may just be completely foreign to them. So um, as we get farther down the road, depending on how long this goes, everyone will ease into it. It will become easier, um, but we need to be patient with the students and with ourselves as we do this beginning uh, bit. Um, and think about also the grading. How do you want to do this? Um, how do you want to grade while they are away and not in your classroom? Um, and come up with a plan of what you want to do and communicate that with your parents. Um, if it's something that you want to do, um, if you only want that to happen when they return, um, you know, but, but think about how you can uh, assess what they've done um, and provide them with some sort of grading um, rubric however you want to do it. Um, and set a goal for yourself to upload assignments weekly. Um, it will help the student plan for their week. It will help the parents plan for their device and how they're going to let them use it. You know, we've got some uh, parents that have three kids in Advent um, and, and one of them is an upper level student and they have tons of work. And then another one, maybe a kid, you know, like they just have to maneuver what they're doing. So, um, just make sure that you are consistent in how you upload your assignments so they can do a little bit of planning and it's not an unreasonable turnaround time. Um, and try to eloquently express to the parents um, that you need support from them at home because now all of a sudden they're co-teaching with you. But we also, um, we don't want them doing the work for them. And, you know, I know we're all aware that the work that gets done in the classroom is we know that the kid is doing it. We don't know what happens when they go home. And there's nothing we can do about this, that at this point. But if we reiterate to the parents, um, remember that this is their learning experience and you're there to help them if they have questions, but not to complete the work for them. Um, that'd be a good thing to remind them of. Um, and I know that this is hard. Um, try to be open to this. Uh, this is a challenge for all of us. Um, you know, but one of the amazing things about uh, the staff at Advent, and I can tell you as a parent first and, and a very, very new faculty member, um, the people that work at Advent are incredible and they're creative and they're amazing. And they're always um, pushing the boundaries of, uh, of, of teaching for kids. And that's something that I'm extremely a proud, I'm proud to be a part of. And I know that this is going to be extremely difficult because um, some of you like me have kids at home. Um, or you have other things going on and so all of a sudden you are teaching from home and your resources are limited as far as, you know, getting out of the house and using your classroom and being in the classroom with kids. But um, be open to the wealth of um, the experience that we're having right now. There's a lot of information out there that we can use. And there's um, because it's happening all around us and everyone is doing it. Um, I'm thankful that there's a lot of resources that have opened up for free um, that we can take make use of. And I think that um, you guys are all amazing and brilliant people. And I know that you will rise to this challenge brilliantly. I know you're going to do great, but um, I know it's terrifying. So just be open and we'll all get there together. And I'm here as a support person. Please remember that. Um, and we can freak out together and figure it out together. So on to PantherNet. 
Um, and this is something that even if you're upper school, I still think that PantherNet has a lot of options for you if you're not wanting to go full Google Classroom. Um, bulletin boards, most people have a bulletin board, um, so I didn't go into great detail with this. The main bulletin board is a good place to give directions. You can kind of when they get on your bulletin board, you can have some documents that say, hey, go to the topics or hey, go to this. It's a good place to give expectations for what you're going to do, your grading process. Um, that can be the main um, information station and then send them to the other places, right? The assignments, um, you're all pretty much um, familiar with making assignments. Um, and I will try to make a video for this as well, if some of you are not familiar. Um, but you can attach um, a description, a title, and all of that stuff to this. Um, and then uh, you can, you know, put how much it's going to, uh, how many points it's going to be and all that, and then save. Um, you can give a test on PantherNet. It actually went through it. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, and I have made a video on how to do that. Um, it's going to be linked on the uh, resource page as well. Um, so I'm not going to go through all of these steps, but I show you in a video on how to do it. And the same with online discussion. If you want to make a community where the kids can talk back and forth about a question that you ask or a statement that you make, um, and you can even post videos or images or a link to something and they have to respond to it. Um, it's actually quite neat and they can, um, they can be graded for it. You can see how many people have responded. It's a, it's, it's a fun tool. And I think that um, it would be a neat thing. And I have a video on that as well. Um, one of the things that I'm really glad that I just learned about and I'm going to be using um, going forward are the topics, the topic section. Um, we're doing uh, poetry for language arts in fourth grade. And it's really cool because we're going through different forms. I can make a topic for every single form. And within that topic, I can put videos, links, handouts, anything like that. I can have my discussion in there as well. It all is going to be under that little tab. Um, and so when they pull up the topic section, it'll say sonnet, free verse, um, odes, all the different things that we're doing, and all of the information is going to be in there. So it's a really nice organizing way um, of, of doing a section of learning. You can split it up with spelling or um, geography or culture or whatever it is that you're doing. If you're doing a section on history, but you're doing specifically the Civil War, um, you can do that as well. It's, it's a really neat thing, and I made a video on it, and hopefully it'll help you um, because it's got a lot of um, options within it that I think um, is good. Um, so videos, you can create a video of yourself um, talking about things that might help them learn about concepts, um, like using YouTube. Um, one of the things that I've learned is, um, or I've learned about is Screencastify. It's a really great app that, um, it's a great app that you can use and then edit it after you do it. And it's how I'm making this thing right now. And you can even delete if you, the, this right here can go away. You don't even have to have yourself in it. It can be, um, all about this part, or you can make this bigger and it can be the video only. And you can, I mean, you can do all kinds of things. There's a really cool app called Flip Grids, and especially great for some of the older kids, but it might be really fun for the younger ones too, um, where you make a video and then you ask them to respond with a video and they're all there together. And it's a really fun way of communicating with people. Um, and it's free, you know, it's called Flip Grid. Another thing is, um, wait, okay, YouTube, Chris Screencastify. Um, you can, uh, you can use the camera within your computer, um, or you can even use it on your phone. You can get your phone to do it. Um, but then once you do it, you can upload to your own YouTube channel. It's extremely easy. Um, and then you can even, you know, have stats and all that kind of stuff if you want to get fancy about it. Um, and, uh, or you can upload it directly to the Panthernet site. Um, either way works. And, um, and so it can be just another way of talking to the kids. Um, I've put a few online resources here, but I have a giant document that I'm trying to organize and it will also be on the, the distance learning research page, uh, resource page, not research. Um, 
and um, Brain Pop, they've decided to be free. Right now, I know we already have a school account, but they're making it open so everyone can use it. Zoom is the one that um, where you can communicate, and I've made a video about this, where we can communicate together, make a classroom. It's super cool, um, and you can do a 40-minute class if you want and have everyone meet up with you. Um, YouTube videos, the internet is huge, and there's a YouTube video for everything. Um, our everyday math, um, all everybody has a username and password. You can get them to do the games and everything online. Um, Khan Academy is unbelievably amazing. Um, Edutopia, it's an it's a learning site that might be better for you, but it has resources. Um, and then there's Mystery Science, if any of you guys are doing science. Um, but like I said, I have a giant document. There's um, so many story times going on. So many author illustrators are trying to make themselves available for teachers and for students. And um, it's a really cool thing. Um, uh, and as a last note, um, I mean, this is, you know, I, I just wanted you to know that um, I know this is extremely difficult. We have um, people that are super savvy with anything tech. Um, we have people that absolutely have no idea what they're doing and it's okay to be anywhere on the spectrum. Um, but, um, I think one of the great things about, uh, what we do at school is, you know, we are in these kids' lives every day, all the time. Uh, they see us and, um, because of what is going on right now, and because it is kind of a scary thing, um, you know, there's the word pandemic, alone is enough to terrify a child. Um, you know, we still are that, um, that steady, that image for them because they're used to seeing us. And if they can continue to interact with us in some way while they're at home, I think that it's beneficial to them. It doesn't matter if they're four, it doesn't matter if they're 13. You know, I think that, um, you know, being there for them through videos and through, expecting things of them homework wise or independent reading or whatever it is that we have them doing at home. I think that, um, it's, it's a good thing for us to do, even though it's going to be extremely difficult. Um, but that's why I want to be here for you in any way that I can. I'm, I'm very lucky in the sense that I, um, when I just, I just finished school a couple of years ago and everything was online. So I'm kind of used to interacting with, teachers and students, um, via computer. So it was something that I did. It was an all online course, uh, or, or course of study. And, um, so I'm a little bit more familiar with it than some of you may be. And if I can not answer the question, we will figure it out. We will find out how to make it easier for you, um, through this extremely uncertain time. So please reach out to me. Please let me know if there is anything I can do. Um, if not, I will ask ET. I will ask somebody else. Um, we will, we will Google it. We'll figure it out. Um, but let me know if I can answer any questions for you and, um, look for the, um, why am I, I'm losing the name of it. Um, the distance learning resource page, which is going to be under our faculty, um, resource page. Um, it will be there. And so there'll be videos there. There'll be, uh, this document will be there as well as the documents that, um, th where the free online resources will be. Um, and, um, uh, we, if we need to get a subscription for something, if you think it's something valid that you think the school needs, let us know, maybe we can check into it because a lot of places are lifting the fees and, um, we can have access as a school until the end of this. So, um, Thanks so much for listening. I know this was a very long video, um, but please feel free to reach out if there's um, anything I can do, anything I can help with. Bye.